Hey, this is Ramon, Channel South of Four, and this is going to be a short one, hopefully. I'm in the middle of some other stuff anyway. But right now I was watching Jordan Peterson on his response to junior high and high school students. My glasses are broken, by the way. And uh, I realized something, I don't know, about two weeks ago, but it's been the holidays and I got other projects going on, so I haven't really had a chance to address something that I realized. I really uh, like Jordan Peterson, I like what he says, I like his videos, but I've been trying to figure out where, where he's wrong. I've been really working hard to figure out where he's wrong. Uh, and you can argue that his tone is incorrect. You can argue that his approach is sometimes inappropriately aggressive and inappropriately inquisitive when he contains the answer, when he's holding the answer in his hands, he just doesn't give it. He just instead presents his opinion as if it's a question, if somehow that lets him get away from the uh, severity of his ideas. But none of those are actually wrong. You can, those are just approaches that certain people don't like, which I, by the way, I happen to like those approaches because I like Socrates and that's kind of Socrates' method. So I like the Socratic method. Works for me. But he is wrong about something. Okay? Now I'm going to hit the hardest one first, and I'll hit the one that's closest to me last. He says that the humanities, specifically women's studies, is impossibly... Uh, I'm going to just use the word wrong. And he's wrong about that. The humanities and women's studies do a lot of good. I can remember, and I'm not that old, I can remember being in school, both in high school and in college, and wanting to read female authors and not being able to find any. Now, I'm not talking about modern female authors. I just simply wanted to read some stuff from the Victorian era or some Gothic literature or some early writings by females, by women. And there wasn't any. That doesn't mean there, that none existed. There was none available for publication. There was none available in the college library. There was none available in the high school library. So what's up with that? Now, many years later, let's say at least 15 years since I was in college, I can go on Amazon and I can find those books that were not available, that were out of print and out of circulation. Now they exist. That is partially a consequence of the female studies movement in colleges because the college students needed those books, they ordered them, the publisher printed them because they realized they could make some money, and what didn't sell went on, went on sale to the public, and some idiot like me could now buy those books and read them. Okay? So he's wrong there. Tiny, tiny, itty bitty wrong. Let's go down a rung. He's wrong about there not being a necessity to uh, the homosexual transgendered studies. He's wrong. Clearly, there is a necessity. He is correct that the approach they're currently working and, and pushing is hurting all the ground that that community has gained in the academic world and in the minds of the layperson. Because the the lay community has come to understand that homosexuality and transgenderism is a product of biochemical uh, reactions in the brain and how there are biological differences outside of the XY norm. All that language, by the way, I'm not a biology major and I definitely suck at math. All that's in my head too, okay? And I'm just an idiot from South Texas, my previous employer. No, no, not, not educated at all, trucker, uh, who had me doing his paperwork and had me doing his filing and had me do all his kind of like correspondence stuff. That's what I was doing for him. He understood this language thanks to the, uh, the scientific approach that was taken in these kind of studies about homosexuals. But he understood all the scientific stuff. And that made it easier for him to accept 
the condition of those people who have those biological impulses. So if you take away those biological impulses and you turn it into just societal pressures, suddenly he's no longer on a gay person's side and suddenly all his homophobia just comes right back up to the surface. Do you see the problem with trying to make everything a social construct? Okay. So those courses were directly necessary to create an environment where someone that's that uneducated and that isolated from society can still learn about the realities of homosexuality. So it's not as if there aren't some good. I understand that they're currently working against themselves, that those courses are working against the culture they claim to represent, but that doesn't mean that the course itself is evil or wrong. It just means that it's currently taking a, a turn to the extreme, okay? Because when you go to extremism or you go to fundamentalism, you suddenly lose all the progress in the middle, okay? Extremism on both sides, never a good thing, okay? Just, it never is. So let's go down another rung. Okay, so where else is he wrong? Okay, so he's wrong that the courses have no value. He's wrong that the progress that they've engendered, no pun intended, has been, have been all negative. Obviously, there's been some positive effects from these courses existing. And then we get to disability. So, for instance, I'm dyslexic. Uh, I was uh, dating someone who has a child who's deaf. Uh, I have a friend who has a kid who's autistic. Um, and these people, meaning the parents, all have concerns. And as someone who's had to, who has dyslexia, you don't ever not have it, and has overcome it, um, there are still challenges. I still see things backwards. I still um, flip letters. I still, uh, I still can't spell worth anything. I still can't... Uh, <clears throat> I still have to think twice as hard to do math. That being said, my job is writing, and I write professionally, and I write quite well, thanks to a dictionary... You know what I mean? And just practice and repetition. So it's not as if these things aren't overcomable, but you have to have a professor or a teacher or an employer who's willing to let you overcome those problems. Now, with the reasonable accommodation, if you still can't accomplish the task, then yeah, you're out. And unreasonable accommodations are never a good thing. A, because they make you feel stupid, and B, because an unreasonable accommodation won't actually let you be able to accomplish the task that actually needs to get done. So just to be aware, I'm not saying like you should give everybody everything that they want. I'm saying that if the accommodation is not going to be a detriment to the job and it might actually um, be a, an opening for opportunity for people who otherwise wouldn't come to your place of business and now they know that they can, for instance, for instance, if you have someone who's deaf and they speak sign language, now you can have more deaf clients. If, you're, um, if you happen to have an employee who's blind and you have to uh, add Braille to the literature you hand out, you can now entice more blind clients to come to your place of business. So there are places where those kind of adjustments can actually be a benefit and a boon to anybody who uh, uses them. So, Jordan Peterson is wrong there. So, is he wrong about certain of these things? Yes. He is wrong that they are totally ill. He is seeing the very real, very um, stupid, and very extreme problems that are occurring because these branches of study have gone out of control like a wildfire. But he's negating all the positive uh, outcomes that have come from them. And there's a good saying of don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So are these fields of study currently a problem in society? Yes. Okay. Anytime you're stifling free speech, anytime you're hurting your own cause, anytime you're going to actually hurt the very people you claim to be protecting. Yeah. You're, you're sick. You, you're, you're doing something wrong. You've taken a bad turn. 
But that doesn't mean that everything's bad. Police make mistakes all the time. We don't want to get rid of police departments, okay? You said you want to have better training for the police. Okay. Have higher standards for the police. Militaries make mistakes. You don't get rid of a military because then you'll be defenseless. Instead, you train the soldiers better. You make the standards to getting in higher. So, what is a better solution than his solution? Because that's the last point where he's wrong. His solution is a scorched, a scorched earth. A better solution. So, let's say somebody comes in with a far left idea that is extreme beyond the bounds of of the society that they're currently in. For instance, they're an anarchist and they're encouraging anarchism. You fire them. Just in the same way, if someone was super far right and they were pro Ku Klux Klan, you fire them. See, you know to fire this guy, the Ku Klux Klan guy, you need, to, you need to know to be able to fire the anarchist guy, okay? I realize that the anarchist guy is cool or the anarchist girl is cool and she's got, you know, she'll bring in a, a, a more interesting set of students but the extreme guy the guy who the guy who wants all the the insane stuff yeah he could bring in a whole new set of students too you don't want them running your departments either okay so you have to understand that the extremes on both ends are problematic it's not like one extreme is good but the other extreme is bad or one extreme is good and the other extreme is bad no both extremes are problematic both extremes are bad Okay? You have the problem of extremes. You have the problem of representation and non-representation and all that other stuff. Well, you should hire, hire the best person for the job. Don't worry about whether or not the students are being represented by the professor. As long as this professor can teach what the students need to learn, that should be all that matters. Not gender, not sex, not color, not any of that stuff. Basically, Jordan Peterson is right that there is an illness going on in society, that free speech does need to be protected, that people on both extremes should be allowed to speak regardless of whether or not you agree with what they're saying. Yes, he's correct about that. But he's wrong in thinking that that means that the entire fields of study that have led to these authoritarian ideas need to be shut down. Because you can go all the way back until whatever you believe in somehow had authoritarian ideas. Every idea, if brought to the extreme, can be a problem. So, I think his solution is incorrect. Though his initial diagnosis of the problems are correct, I think his idea that the entire system has failed is incorrect. Because good things have come from these programs. So, we need to pull the programs back put them under control, uh, give them, hire the kind of people who can do these kind of jobs correctly, put standards in to make sure that the people who are teaching these classes are published, are, their papers are being cited by other people, make sure that they have a clear belief in the freedom of speech, make sure that they have a clear belief in whatever government you're in, that they have a clear belief in that governmental system. Okay? So, if you're, uh, a, if you're in a democracy, make sure that people teaching that class, teaching your courses, believe in democracy. If you're in a republic, make sure they believe in a republic. If you're in a monarchy, make sure they believe in a monarchy. Otherwise, you're just teaching your own enemies. That's just a weird approach. To all you psychos out there who are calling Jordan Peterson out alt-right. Okay, so a few days ago, like literally last night, I was bored. And I decided to look up alt-right, and I found uh, Sargon of Akkad's uh, questions for the alt-right, okay? And under that were a whole bunch of alt-right people responding to his questions. And then I listened to his uh, commentary. I don't know. I listened to his commentary with the guy who started off that, that whole firestorm of those questions. Okay, that's an actual alt-writer, okay? He, he didn't like Jews. The, 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 the people responding to these questions didn't like Jews, uh, thought that women should be left, should, be, should stay at home and shouldn't work. They thought that there should be ethno states that were every state should be its own culture, which in America, how would you even figure that out? We're going to all become Native American. Um, you know, 
they believed in uh, free market societies with uh, that only supported free markets for people of a certain culture, and that's whatever the dominant culture of the society were. That's alt-right. Jordan Peterson believes none of those things, okay? Jordan Peterson, if you want to know what he believes, watch his videos. I've, for the last year or two years, have watched as many of his videos as I can. When I go work out, I'll put his stuff on as I'm working out, okay? I get to about, his videos are about two hours long. I get to about two or three videos a week is what I get through of his stuff. You know what? He's not alt-right, okay? He's just not. He's anti-Nazi. He's anti-racism. He's pro-inclusion. He's, um, he actually kind of supports old school gay rights, like old, old school gay rights, like the kind of gay rights people were fighting for when I was in high school back in the nineties. Yeah. He supports that. Okay. So I don't know where you guys are getting these ideas. Believe me, he does, he does go too far in his rhetoric and, and starts to, uh, bridge on edge on authoritarianism. But he never goes into the far right extremism of hate or uh, prejudice or um, extremism or fundamentalism. He never hits those notes. In his religious stuff, he's very pragmatic. In his uh, approaches to harsh racism, he's absolutely against it. He vilifies racist and uh, he vilifies um, acts of hatred, not just in our current society, but throughout history. He talks about acts of hatred going all the way back to Cain and Abel, okay? It, if you don't believe in Cain and Abel, he goes all the way back to Mesopotamia, okay? If you want to talk about that. He vilifies acts of hatred throughout time. So what makes you think that he would, in our time, suddenly start, well, I didn't like it when it happened in the past, but when it's happening now, it's fine? No, that's not what he's saying. So you're just simply misreading him because you don't like what he's saying. But that doesn't make him wrong. It has to be more than that. And like I said, I could not find a fault with his uh, diagnosis, but I definitely find a fault with his conclusion because there have been good there have been good things and good consequences of these movements and organizations and studies and intellectual inquiries. There have been. It's just currently. If you're someone who believes in free speech and in liberty, you don't, you, it's hard to see the forest fire from the trees. Okay. But if we can put the forest fire out and see that some of these trees are beautiful and necessary and that they will spring forth new life and new growth in a positive way, I think you'll see that these um, disciplines should be encouraged. They just need to be redefined and redisciplined. All right. Peace, like, subscribe. Enjoy.